Hey, so it's Matt Powers here at Baker Creek. We're back in the seed warehouse. We're uh, here today to talk about corn. Uh, and if you grow corn, you probably have grown sweet corn. And this, most people just, you know, we grow sweet corn because we want that fresh corn and that's what that summer garden and the memories we all have of corn really you know, revolves around. But did you know that there's six types of corn? Yeah, so um, there, there, there's sweet, there's popcorn, right? We all know popcorn. There's flour, there's flint, there's dent, and there's this sixth one that's called pod that is very interesting and not many people grow. Um, and then there's actually specialty types that we'll talk about too. So I just want to like talk about the different kinds of corn, and uh, and then we'll talk about you know show examples of the corn that we have that we're selling in our in our seed catalog, and there's actually a lot of things that we're trying to scale up and bring out um, that are really really special and interesting. Uh, and as you might not know, uh, we GMO test all our corn so that it's guaranteed to not have transgenic contamination. So when you're looking for pure seed, and when, we, when we're talking about pure seed, we're not just talking about heirlooms. We're talking about seeds that are free of contamination, uh, genetic pollution, transgenic genes. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about that sort of thing. All right, so to start off with, um, a little bit like about like the history of corn. Um, corn started off as a grass. It was teosinte. And it was just a, a, a grain on top of a grass. And before we noticed the the grain, um, we would juice it like uh, sugar cane and chew the stalks and stuff. And uh, I I know this because Stephen Smith told me. <laughs> um, and he he was saying that uh, then we noticed the seeds, and then we started saving the seeds. And it was and then from popcorn. Uh, it's thought that pod corn came from. Um, it's it's thought, and and it's we know for sure that um, uh, popcorn uh, came from uh, teosinte. Uh, or actually, we believe that from teosinte it went to pod corn, but th th that's qu uh, kind of unclear. It went from teosinte to popcorn for sure. Uh, we actually have one of the first two corns in our catalog. So when we talk about rare corn, it, like, it doesn't get any rarer than this. So let, let, let me show you what that looks like, and I can talk about that right now too. Okay, so let's flip the camera around so we get the detailed camera on there. All right, so it's Chapolote, uh, and you know, I might be mispronouncing that. Forgive me if I do. I studied French and not Spanish in school, so I might be butchering it, and I apologize if so. So this right here is kind of a typical cob size. Uh, you can see my hand in relation to it um, and it goes longer and sometimes can go shorter uh, and this is a popcorn and it's a brown corn it looks creamy when um, it's fresh uh, but when as it dries down it gets this glassy um, brown color and it's actually really um, in, in person it looks almost metallic it's really beautiful and th th this is this is considered the first popcorn there's also another one um, called Naltel, um, and Stephen Smith has both of these. Um, we're selling this popcorn in our catalog, which is so incredible. Um, if you look on there, it says carbon dating, you know, is like 4,000 years ago for this corn. So it's just absolutely incredible and really, really exciting. Um, and then, uh, when we talk about um, popcorn that we have, we have this Dakota popcorn, and it's it looks black. It's Dakota black popcorn. It's actually like quite reddish. I don't know if I can get to, there. We go. It's focusing more. It shows a little bit of the red here at the tip, um, and it's slightly pointed. Um, it's grippy when you go this way along it. It catches your finger. Uh, early popcorn had like horns. It was like like pointy and sharp. Uh, and some Peruvian varieties still have that characteristic. So yeah, this is also in our catalog. So this is a popcorn and that's black. Um, <clears throat> so out of, out of, out of popcorn, 
there was a sweet popcorn that started at a certain point and it was called um, popcorn chulpy or confit chulpy and it's the first sweet popcorn uh, Stephen Smith gave me some of that so sweet pop uh, sweet corn shrivels uh, when it dries down so it doesn't look as as happy as other corn does when it's dried down but this is the midnight snack um, and it's black sweet corn how exciting is that do you guys know that the first uh, sweet corn ever discovered was was black uh, Papoon, uh, the Iroquois corn, and this uh, it, this is the the Dorini, and this is a sweet corn we also offer, and it's a very early. Oh, I see my wife gave me a little heart. I love that. Um, and so th this is another corn we offer that's absolutely superb, and it's early and it's great for cool climates. So if you're in a northern climate, this could be a winner. And then sort of the opposite sort of the opposite of sweet corn is flower corn or well the, well no that's not exactly true that's not let me let me put it this way the opposite of flower corn is flint corn and and popcorn is very flinty um, and what and 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 so it's it's the the reverse you know when you eat popcorn and then there's that centerpiece that white little bit that actually is almost all of this and it's and it, the reason I think of it is opposite of uh, sweet corn is because that's opposite of shriveling but that's not the really way to think about it because if you cross flint and flour you end up with dent which um, is over here Ugh, is over here you guys see that see how it's all dented like that that's the cross between these two things uh, and not these actual two varieties. I'm just talking about the two uh, types. So, what that comes out to is this is all where all the glassy stuff comes from. The popcorn and the flint stuff is all the see-through, beautiful glass. Uh, glass gem corn is a popcorn. Um, and so, that's where all these kinds of things from. This is a um, hot knot South African corn. It's a land race. It's orange. We're working on bringing this to you guys. And then, this year... You guys have a treat. This, this incredibleness, this long incredibleness is Papa's blue. This is Papa's red. Let's just kind of, hey Steven, I see you there. Steven Smith is now with us. Um, and this Papa's red is absolutely incredible. Actually, the creator of, the creator, well developer I should say, the developer of Painted Mountain Corn just wrote a review on this corn and his genetics and painted mountain corn actually went into this there were other co other corn varieties that were used in this breeding project by Ed Schultz but this um, this really wouldn't have happened without uh, all the work that Dave Christensen did to make pa painted mountain so incredible this is a cold climate short season huge ear flower corn and it may be the quickest um, that, 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 that anyone's developed so far. And it's huge, and it's gorgeous, and it's red, white, and blue, right, huh? Red, white, and blue, have it ready for uh, Fourth of July. It's incredible. So, that, 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 those are flower corn. Oh yeah, and, and here, here is the glass gem corn that everyone loves, and there's a, a bunch of breeding projects right now. I don't know if you guys can see readily off the bat, but there's there's like pink groupings, there's purple groupings, and then there's this like green thing going on. And, and, the, and, and there's a lot of interesting products starting around, based around solid colored glass gem corns that you should keep your eye out for because they're gonna be exciting. All right, and then um, the waxy corn. So this is Chinese waxy corn. And it's a specialty type of corn. I don't have a cob of it. I apologize for, about that. But this corn is like used as a thickener. It's sticky corn. Uh, and the, and um, there's lots of uses for, for waxy corn and there's other specialty corn too. Um, and one last corn I'll, I'll show you. Uh, this is that Peruvian corn that I, I grew in my yard um, in California this year. And it's Peruvian land race. It's Piscoronto from uh, the catalog two years ago 
and this is its second year and it's doing really really well I'm really happy with it and hopefully we get this adapted so that everyone can grow this everywhere in North America oh, it, it takes a long season so we're gonna have to see what we can do to shorten it but we'll see it's huge kernels it's a flower corn and it's retained a lot of that early popcorn trait uh, of being uh, more, more, more squat and actually, I have some with pointy, um, pointy kernels, which are also our popcorn thing. So I'm gonna flip the camera around now. So uh, and then the last corn, the sixth uh, uh, form of corn, the pod corn, is kind of uh, an interesting. It's an interesting relative, and most people don't grow it because each individual kernel has a husk. <laughs> So it's a little bit like chia, if you've grown chia, uh, where it's this enclosing husk around the seed and you have to undo every husk to get the seeds. So it, it, it's been called grandfather corn, it's been called other things, um, and not many people grow that. Um, and we'll hopefully get an example of that to show you guys and maybe make a nice corn display uh, to take a picture and put online for you guys to see it all together. and. In detail with a really nice camera and uh, that's one of the greatest things about working here is that they really care about making sure that people see the diversity and they make sure these pictures are high quality so that we can actually see what's going on because you know it's one thing to hear about it but once you once you see that color and that pattern it's like I need that that's what I need you know and it's truly inspiring so those are just some of the corns uh, that we have now and there's going to be so many more corn uh, varieties and, and, and special things that you know we've never even heard of. I mean I, every day it seems like I hear about something I've never heard about and you know you research it, you, you hear about this thing like from Stephen Smith or, or Martin or, or, or Randall or all these amazing people who work here. and. And, and you go and research it and there's like two references and they're either like 60s or 70s or like maybe one in the 90s or something like that. And and it's just incredible because that means that the pool of people growing this, this, this corn or, or, or this plant is so small that if one, just one section of that chain of events didn't happen, we wouldn't have that research. We wouldn't have that seed. We wouldn't have that, you know, those ideas, the, those things are possible. That you can do that with corn? Wait, there's black sweet corn? You know, all these different ideas that just seem like, where is this coming from? You know, it's, and, it's, and it's coming from the soil. It's coming from the farmers. It's coming from our heritage, our, our families, you know. And uh, you guys can participate in continuing that legacy, continuing that heritage. And I feel privileged to be part of it, um, and I and I have been for years, you know, in my own garden. And we all, like, like I said, we all can do that and participate in our own small way. And you may go on to fall in love with something and and make something new, and it could end up here. I mean, it really, really could be. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Uh, seed breeding um, is more hard work and uh, paying attention and observation than it is. Um, you having some special skill that no one else has. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's it's all about just getting out there, getting educated and trying things. So I hope that uh, you guys can all do that. And I'll quickly look over some of these questions now uh, so that I can answer some of them. All right, here we go. Can you boil and grill all corn or just sweet corn? Actually, um, there's so many different types of corn out there that um, I'm pretty sure that roasting corn is not necessarily always sweet corn, especially in other areas of the world. Um, they have like roasting corn, they have fresh eating corn, they have, um, you know what I mean? Like they have very specific uses for corn in areas where there's more corn. Uh, in America, we we tend to have like left or right, you know what I mean? They're like, do you want this one or this one? And there's just so many that what we've done is we've been like, all right, well, I like roasted corn and I'm from this country and you guys just have yellow corn, so I'm gonna roast your yellow corn. And 
and that's this this is like the way I like to eat it and it tastes sort of the same and but in a lot of these oh, these home countries they're 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 roasting and grilling something else entirely that's specialized to that because it, the flavors and the, and the the composition of the uh of the actual kernel is it favors that you know what i mean uh there's also parching corn there's popping corn parching corn doesn't pop it um it's like corn nuts where it makes the corn brittle um and and you can just uh you just kind of chew on the corn and make like a little corn meal in your mouth and what happens is after a while your saliva starts uh, digesting it and it starts sweetening um that's one of the one of the ways people eat parching corn i've tried it and it's really good so um here let me let me dive into some of these other questions I see that uh, the folks up, at the, uh, the other folks uh, are jumping in and answering questions. I really appreciate that. All right, so here we go. Let's dive into these questions. We have 19 comments. You guys feel free to add more. All right. Uh, I need zone 6A corns only. How do I know? Well, um, it really depends um, and then we have to realize that uh, we can adapt things um, so it may not do well that first season if it comes from a warmer climate um, what, what what area is 6a a exactly because 6a next to the shore is different from 6a in the middle of the country um, so Michael Todd Carr if you could tell me a little bit more um, I might be able to help you with that it's not showing more comments. Um, well, I really appreciate you guys jumping in. I'll jump right on the comments here. Uh, hopefully it'll show me more and I'll get specific answers to the zones uh, for the corn individually. And I'll do that now for you guys, all right? Have a wonderful day. And if you're if you're not into corn, if you're like, man, I'm afraid of corn because of all the, the memes out there, all the stuff you've been reading out there, understand a few things. The corn that they're growing that's GMO sticks out like a sore thumb when it crosses. Uh, especially if you're growing one of these rare, crazy varieties. Um, and then the other thing about that corn is it's very specific timing-wise. They can grow it in a specific window and harvest it in a specific window. And if you're in the Midwest and you're worried about all that kind of stuff, grow something earlier. And it will be sending out its pollen when um, you're already done. And so it won't ever affect your corn. The, po will just, uh, the pollen will just like be interacting with your drying down corn and the, the seeds that already set. So, and then uh, what uh, is a good organic way to prevent worms in corn? Um, I have not dealt with corn worms in California. Um, I, I, I can't answer something that I, I've never dealt with so, and I'm not going to try, but I'll look into that for you. Um, strawberry program did well here in Indiana, but not white sweet corn. And again, when we save the seed, ridiculous things can happen. I know they get mine every year. Okay, so this is a serious problem. People are, are, are worried about um, the corn, uh, this corn borer wor worm. Um, what I do know is that, that there are always, there's always a balance to be, to be made. Uh, and so when there's bugs, when there's weeds, they're always indicating something that's deficient or uh, imbalanced. And so if we just provide that balance, and that's kind of what we act, that we facilitate balance in our gardens or in our farms or our homes or whatever, right? Um, when we provide balance, those pests, um, they, 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 they tend to become more stable. Uh, and then raccoons... <laughs> raccoons I've heard that squash uh, cover it, having a squash um, uh, understory can really help because they don't like stepping on it with their feet uh, another thing uh, people do is they have dogs outside 
Another thing people do is they do hot wires. Um, there's a lot of uh, different uh, things you can try, and I'm willing to bet it's going to be individualized for raccoons. Um, they, they, they're they're a little bit more determined. <laughs> okay, one. Uh, what's one cool corn to try this year? Okay, well we just went over a bunch of cool corns. I think the one that I would try, and my family, I'm just gonna confess here that my family doesn't grow sweet corn because flower corn um, is sweet. Before the starch is set, it's sweet. So I would totally do Papa's corn because it's twice the size of, of the Painted Mountain corn, which I already love and I've always been playing with anyway. And it's new and it's been working, Ed Schultz has been working on this for 20 years. And they're just like crazy. I think I would get a pack of each one and do a whole like red, white, and blue um, uh, garden area and and just uh, have the kids go out and harvest them because it would just be exciting. And because they're, they're painted mountain corn, they're low ha uh, growth habit, so they're short. So the kids can feel empowered and they're not like 17 foot tall corn. So this is an exceptional corn uh, people are excited. Corn breeders are excited about it. You know what I mean? This is so exceptional that people ever all over the world should be growing. And if you've never grown flower corn, I really recommend it. Um, it's much more digestible. Um, it's it's much more beautiful when it dries down, um, especially if you're saving it for seed. Um, the crinkleness of of the of the sweet just doesn't speak to me as much as the beauty that you see in popcorn. And, and the flower. So, um, I think, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, which was the first documented sweet corn by the English settlers? Oh, that would be the Papoon Iroquois. See, Stephen Smith's already quizzing me. I can't, I, ah! All right, well, I'm glad you got your catalog, Barbara. Everyone else, if you haven't gotten your catalog, but it's ordered, it's totally on its way. Um, they're all arriving right now, and we know it because you're calling us at twice the volume that you did yesterday. So people, it is arriving. People are getting exciting. The orders are coming in. It's constantly going. The orders are filling up. So uh, the excitement is hitting the streets right now. Uh, and I hope you guys all check out the crazy corn and, and realize that there's six types of corn. We don't have the six, the, the pod corn, but... Not many people are growing that because the utility of it is, is limited. Um, and it's not extinct or anything. I'm not saying it's extinct, Stephen. Uh, but, um, but, but yeah, we don't, we're not doing that yet. Uh, we may get to that. But we have all these other corns. If you just have only grown sweet, now's the time. Go out there, go, get on rareseeds.com and check out the, the crazy popcorns we have. I mean, I say crazy, but they're not crazy at all. We're talking about this is the this is this is our heritage. I'm talking about our our family history. You know, this is this is part of who we are. And and you know, Stephen, th this is this is a uh, this is the dent corn that Stephen's uh, Stephen's ancestor. This is Hurst Reed, and this yellow dent corn is a huge thing in his family, and it's his family history. If it wasn't because of this purchase. Um, it, it, his it, his life path wouldn't be on the path it's on, and that's what's so powerful about these things that we grow, is because it can affect our families for generations and generations, and even affect the course of history. Something to think about. All right, do I let uh, popcorn dry on the stock? Well, um, yeah. Because uh, you want to get all the good stuff that the plant wants to give that seed into the seed um, before you separate it from that. So you want that stock to be dried down, um, the, the husk around it to be dried down. And um, obviously it can be very difficult in some areas. I say that um, because that makes the most beautiful seed and it makes perfect seed when you have it completely dried down on the stock. And some people don't get that because they get early rains and there's stuff like that going on. And what you can do is at the latest possible moment, uh, you can cut it and then turn it upside down and hang it. And then that will send all those sugars, enzymes, and all that down in back into the seed. 
and uh, it takes it takes some longer to dry down that way because all the water and moisture is just held right as it continues to um, develop but that's a really good way to uh, lengthen the developmental uh, time period of the corn all right so uh, sweet Adam got his catalog today too it's a it's a thing people are getting their catalogs this week <laughs> I'm so glad everyone's excited. Okay, so here, uh, need to get a catalog and order your seeds. You do need to get a catalog and order your seeds, but if you go to rareseeds.com and you just click that top button and enter your information, it'll be on the way. So that's all you got to do with that one. I'm going to unpin this. I figured out how to unpin. This is huge. We're progressing. Let's do one of these on gourds. Um, I would love to do these on gourds and all squash because a lot of people get confused about how squash is like pumpkins and summer squash and winter squash and they get them all confused actually I'll admit when I heard winter squash I thought we grew them over winter I did not realize that it's you keep it over winter at first so these words that we use are important to know the real meanings <laughs> <laughs> oh man so what's the best sweet corn for South Texas hot weather uh, Stephen Smith do you want to field that one uh, Stephen will probably give you an answer uh, that will be the most accurate uh, and if not I'll ask him myself and give that to you later I got the free catalog she got our free catalog too um, yeah and so yeah we'll talk about gourds and squash awesome Thank you so much for coming and visiting and asking questions and interacting. Because the thing is, if we don't all talk about these ideas and I say something and then you say something and then someone comes with their own experience, we're, we're never going to get all this information out there. Because, it, I mean, we're all, we're all having our own experiences in the garden. There's awesome things happening in each of our gardens. And it's all exciting. And it all can help us too. So. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow at 3, and I hope you guys have a wonderful night, and you dream of seeds. <laughs>